I wrote this song called Aja and uh, I ended up using my son's voice also on it. And while I was making the song, I probably cried like 100 times. Why? I don't know. I mean, uh, A, it's a love song and uh, B, my son's on son's voice is on it. So I think this... Guri Gangsta. Guri Gangsta, that's what he's called. <laughs> <laughs> Then I asked Smithy, like, what do you think? And the moment she heard the song, she started crying and her tears rolling. And she's like, this is, this is you. This is how it works. And I told her that most probably this is not going to be the face of the album. This song's not going to do that well because it's probably, like, too emotional. But surprisingly, I've seen in, like, past six, seven months that this is actually the number one song. This is what people request the most. It has the most amount of likes, it has the most amount of reposts. And it's in Punjabi, it's not even in Hindi, you know, so it's a regional language. It still works. You said, uh, Odin, that when you first moved from Ahmedabad to Goa, the first time you moved to Goa, you actually didn't have work for three years. Yeah. Um, and you said Smithy really kept you going. But at a point like that, how do you believe in yourself? How, how do you think that what you're doing is of value? I mean, three years is a really long time. I actually don't know anything else also to do, so music is the only thing I know. Um, but I think somewhere uh, deep down I thought that uh, I should do one thing which I really believe in and I should do it from my heart. If I can't dedicate that amount of honesty, that level of uh, love to it, then I can't dedicate that to anything else in life either. Right, and if I'll be honest, and if I'll uh, do it with my heart, then it'll happen at some point. It'll that come through. It'll come through, and Smithy told me the same thing. She said it's not working now; it'll work at some point. You know, don't worry. Uh, it's like there's no money now; you know, everything is over. She's like, don't worry, I'll I'll work. She worked, and then she worked, and I was, and that's when I actually came across my sound, my signature sound. Because there was no tension, there was enough love and there's enough peace and there's enough positiveness and everything is just so positive around you. Ideas flows automatically, you know. But then, did you ever at that point have a sort of dark night of the soul thinking ki nahi yoga? You know, for artists it's very tough, yeah? what, what if you don't find an audience? So did you ever have a, those moments of doubt or did you always keep the faith? Uh, I knew it right from There's the no beginning. option. Yeah, there's no, no plan option. B. So I thought within music I can try something else if this thing is not working. So I tried hajar other music styles as well. And nothing really worked. And when I got in touch with OML, uh, they were the first one to actually tell me uh, we want to listen to like each and every song you've ever made. They went through each and every song of mine discarded everything which sounded like anything else and uh, just kept you yeah it's like this is what is original this is what is you you should only make music like this i think uh, at least within this industry because it's so fresh and everything is just new within the electronic dance music in india uh, there's not a lack of talent there's a lack of managers there aren't enough people who will understand they don't get it they don't get it and yeah. the thing is that they try and formalize everything so make a Facebook post or make a Twitter post or do this or do that, which they do for each and every artist. But the thing is that each and every artist is different. You know? So you need to understand what your artist wants, which is where Tej and Rahul come in place because they, they ask me what I want to do, you know, how I want to do it. And I told them that I don't want to work half a year so that I can write new content. You know? So when I come back... And I they got new, that. And they go, I said, like, fool, don't work. It's fine. I don't want to uh, gauge my success based on how much money I make. You know, it's how happy you are is more important, you know. End of the day, uh, when my son is going to be whatever, 15, 20 years old. How old is he? He's four and a half years old now. So he's going to ask me questions, I know it. And if I have a, a ridiculous track, he's going to tell me, why the fuck did you do that song, you know. <laughs> so I need to so make, you want to make sure he doesn't say he doesn't, that? He shouldn't say that, yeah. He should be proud of me. So I want to do like good music all the time. <laughs> That's another driving force. But... Tell me, how does a boy in Ahmedabad say to his parents that this is what I want to do? It wasn't uh, very easy. Uh, wasn't tough either, actually. My dad's pretty chilled out. Uh, but he made sure that I'd do my uh, graduation. Then he said, CA karle, then said, MCA bhi karle. And I did all of those things. But I you're, you're, You've done your CA? 
Yeah, and the thing is that I have done all of those things ratta marke. Huh. Because. Uh, but you must be really smart to do it even ratta marke. Yeah. No, but I didn't score like good marks. I say, chh, uh, 30, 30 percent marks. I passed. Oh, yeah, passed. Oh, yeah. Passed. Oh, yeah. But then I told my dad that this is not what I want to do. I'm just wasting my time. This is what I want to do. And he said, "Ab degree hai, tere ko nokhi to mili jayegi. Chal kar le, chal karna hai." Because the thing is that if I'll take that route, then my son's gonna watch me, and he's gonna take that route as well. You know, if he'll see me fight, if he'll see me uh, do things from the heart and like be dedicated towards it, then that's gonna translate into his energy as well at some point. But that's you know that's not as easy to do because it's it's because money is so seductive because it the is, frills yeah. are so seductive, it the is, yeah. you know fame is so seductive. That's How do true. you How do you say to yourself, no? It's time to stop and take four months off. My wife keeps me grounded, to be honest. With really? You. Yeah. I I mean, I think this year we made a serious chunk of money. The amount of money. Are which you I, rich? I don't consider myself rich <laughs> or poor or anything. I'm very content. I'm very happy. You're comfortable. Yeah, I'm very comfortable. So, uh, but we made quite a lot of money this year, and uh, I thought maybe I can do some more. Cakes and I can make some more money, but uh, my wife keeps me grounded. She's like, "Agar we do it, then there's no end to it." You know, you will want more. If you'll buy a bigger car, you want even more expensive car, even more bigger house. So there's no end to it. You know, so you'll have to sort of draw a line somewhere and say, "That's about it. I'm done." Now I want to spend time with my family. I want to go out with them. I want to travel and I want to be in a relaxed mood, be positive and. You know, when I asked for this interview, uh, Vijay told me that uh, you know he's not he do, he's not comfortable really giving interviews. And and I saw in the videos of your performances, like you don't look up a lot. Yeah. You know, you don't talk to the yeah. audience. So so you're you're somebody who's shy. Uh, when I'm performing, uh, I'm in my zone. So uh, I really enjoy. I'm more or less an audience when I'm like on stage as well. I'm enjoying. So you're having myself. fun. Yeah, I'm having fun. If I'm around people who don't get me or uh, are talking about stuff which I don't believe in, then it becomes difficult, you know. Uh, most of the interviews I end up doing, uh, like for example, if somebody is asking me questions which he's read about just ten minutes before the interview, then I know it because I've answered those questions three hundred times already, you know. So I know that he's not being honest to what he's trying to do, you know. It's, it's I mean, I know it's your job, but then don't do it if you don't believe in it, you know. So. That's the reason why I spoke to Vijay and I told him like, like Vijay, sab to kuch zada hi ho raha hai. Mere ko, I don't like doing interviews. It's like we don't like doing, then don't do it. It's fine. Do only the interviews which you believe in. I was like, cool. That's amazing. And it's very difficult to uh, find someone like Vijay who will tell you don't do interviews because in today's age, all the managers will actually tell you to do as many interviews as you can. Make a Facebook post every day, a Twitter post every day. Perpetuate the brand. Yeah. and i try and like stay away from all of these things as much as i possibly can you talk about getting up in the morning cooking for your son dropping him off to school <laughs> <laughs> you say i don't go to after parties you're really that. ruining our fantasies of the rock star life here you know that yeah unfortunately <laughs> i mean isn't there like a like an image you have to play up to i'm getting old as well now I mean, I'm 36. I'm not 20. That is so old. Oh, then I mean, really. <laughs> to be honest with you, like, I, if I would have been in my 20s, I would have done at least two after parties after my performance. But I can't do that anymore. I feel, and the thing is that I feel that the amount of time I'm investing in music uh, is already way too much, you know. And I believe that one should have balance in more or less everything in life, you know, whether it's music or relationship or anything else. So if I'm spending too much time in my shows and making music then i'm not spending enough time with my family or not not devoting enough time with my son either so i draw a line that abhi show khatam hua i'm going to go i'm going to go because the thing is that for most of the kids who do after parties they will do after parties till whatever like 6 o'clock 7 o'clock in the morning they'll go home at 9 o'clock they'll sleep for the entire bloody day but it's not the same thing with me because when i go home i have to go and wake my son up get him ready drop him to the school and that doesn't and you know it's like a whole days worth of cycle so i need to find a balance somehow so i too certain old, things i don't do to all after parties <laughs> at 36 <laughs> a lot of the djs are also not married you know so they do a lot of the after parties and 
drugs and a lot of the other stuff and try and stay away from it as much as I can. So what inspires you? I mean, apart from the mango and the tea and the relaxing on the beach and Cool go stuff, on. like really interesting music, interesting films. What uh, kind of movies do you watch? My all-time favorite is movies like Jane Bido Yaro and uh, Gangs of Wazipur for sure, uh, Sadma, uh, a lot of the older stuff as well, you know, because there was a lot of breathing space in it. Like it's not necessary to put music behind dialogue sometimes, the silence does the trick, you know. So that sensibility that enough guts to basically do that thing is quite interesting. Be know? still. Yeah. Being still takes courage. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, anything anything which is interesting, I, I really enjoy, I get inspired. And what do you really want to accomplish in the next five years? You talked about making the scene bigger. You said that the next five years are just critical. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see for yourself? I personally just want to be able to uh, make music the way I want to make music. And if I can keep doing that without worrying about money, then I'm very happy. <laughs> That's what I want to do. I don't want to be in a situation where uh, I'm told what to do. Sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> Good yeah. luck. Thank you very I, much. I hope, I hope the scene gets bigger and bigger. Hopefully. And you still find the time for silences on the beach. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Zodian, also known as Nuclear. Uh, if you really enjoyed this interview, then subscribe to this uh, channel, uh, Film Companion.